The billionaire that is building houses for billionaires here don't, in Nigeria. Don't even go there. I'm not a billionaire. You're I'm not, not a billionaire. I'm anything but a billionaire. I'm, I'm but where, where, where we are right now, it's all of billionaires. Yeah, you know, we, 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 maybe we'll serve the billionaires, but I'm not a billionaire. I'm not one of them. <laughs> I'm really it's a pleasure program. meeting you. My name is Wadama. Do I have to introduce myself, though? I mean, you don't have to. You're, I mean, you're a known person. You're a known person. You're everywhere. You just have to tell me who you are because a lot of people watching us don't know your name and where you're from. He's a popular guy, so uh -huh. I'm going to have to introduce myself. Yeah. Tell me your name and okay. where you're from. So my name is Akintola Oladejo. Okay. Um, I run a small company called Prestigious Homes Limited. Uh, I'm from Nigeria. Uh, born and bred in Nigeria. Full-blooded Nigerian. Not mixed in any way. Not mixed in any <laughs> way. Not mixed in any way. I think you, you have know, a lot just, to tell me, yeah? Yeah, so, sure, sure, sure. You, you billionaires first. <laughs> <laughs> you see, you just sat first, ah, so ah, it's the billionaire. Ah, <laughs> Hello, guys. Sensor Global is a one stop shop for all property transactions. We've got the biggest partnerships with the biggest law firms, brokers, and developers all over Nigeria. So if you're looking to invest in Nigeria, buying real estate, reach out to Sesso. Click the link below. Hello, my name is Juliet. I work for Cecil Global and Cecil Global Marketplace is actually a one-stop shop for all property transactions. We help buyers assess very good properties and give them professional services. It's actually, we help you with the experience. And if you're a property developer, you want to target the diaspora market, I think you should contact Cecil Global. My name is Akintola Oladejo. I mean, none of this name is an English name, okay. as you can see. You know, they're all local names. Um, born and bred in Nigeria. Which part of Nigeria? Um, Oyo State, precisely. Okay. Uh, Western Nigeria, Southwest. Okay. Uh, schooled in Nigeria, all my schooling in Nigeria, of course. I'd, I've had opportunity to have several professional training overseas in the United States, mm. France, United Kingdom, and all of that. But, you know, fully trained. You know, in terms of the formal education, not uh, secondary, primary, and uh, university in Nigeria. Um, so, you, you, you I'm married. Are, I have two daughters. Oh, okay. You know, and uh, I'm into property development. Before you know. property development, let us know, like, uh, before property development, what yes. were you doing? Okay, so first, property development has been my passion. But of course, I've had opportunity to work in different sector. Um, I started out um, uh, in banking. Okay, so I was in the financial sector and I left the bank in um, 2007. Okay, I went into the oil industry. So I work with Shlombijay. Shlombijay is, uh, is an oil service company. Yeah. I work with them as an expatriate engineer uh, overseas as an international mobile staff. Um, after Shlombijay, I joined ExxonMobil. So I worked at Ex as, uh, Exxon Mobil as a subsidy engineering team lead. Okay. Um, you know, supporting deep water assets. You know, so I'd actually, I would say that I've, uh, by God's grace, I've practiced engineering at the highest level. Mm. You know, done several trainings in engineering. But while all this was going on, you know, building has always been my passion, really. So you left you all know. that to follow your passion? Absolutely. I had to, you know, um, I had to leave all that to follow my passion, but not blindly. You know that it, it, it evolved. You know, so while I was doing all of this, I was building. You know, I was building. I was already implementing. I was already exper experimenting with my passion. You know, I didn't so just I go did, out. Which means that the money that you are making <laughs> at your profession mm -hmm. is the same money to experiment your passion. Absolutely. You know. Which was year was this? You know, I'd say I've been doing building since 2005, actively. You know, even while I was in employment, okay. you know, you know even when I was living overseas, you know, come build, you know, and Which of course dispose. You, you know, I was living in Angola, and of course from there, you know, you know, uh, maybe for trainings and all of that, I was in the United States, United Kingdom, and all of, and France, and all okay. of that. But basically, based in Angola, I was working for Shlombije, you know. So I was building back in Nigeria. I was building. It's always been my passion. Is what my family, um, you know, my dad was very strong in building. All my siblings are strong in building, you know. So, you know, I guess we'll get back to that later because initially I hated building. Why? <laughs> I hated building. Wow. Growing up, I hated building, you know, because it was, it was, my dad wanted me to, to be a builder. He wanted me to take after him. Mm -hmm. So because it was forced, I hated, I hated it. it. You didn't want it. I didn't want it. You know, I'll be forced to go to site with him and all of that. You know, just, you know, just be an architect. You know, so I didn't want to do it. 
But over time, progressively, I saw that the love for this, the passion for it came on its own. Okay, and I just saw that I couldn't do any other thing but building. I just loved it. Irrespective of what I was doing in banking, I found myself going back to building development. Oil and gas, I found myself going back to development. You know, so, and I'll say that it's what I can do every day for the whole year without getting tired. So it's wow. really my passion. I wow. love it. I love I mean, it so much. What was the first ever building that you built here in Nigeria? So the first ever building I did was in Abuja. As a business, of course, I've been involved with me for a long time. But as a business, the first was in Abuja. I could remember then it was um, it was actually a four-bedroom bungalow. You know, I sold it to a lady in the UK. You know, and that was the ever first real estate sale I was doing. It was so to you know, it was so to someone that lives in London. You know, it was developed in Abuja, and there on you know I just you know did some other ones in Abuja, then uh, moved to Lagos, and in Lagos we've done well over a hundred houses. Whoa. You know, well over a hundred houses. You know, different category. Hundred houses in Lagos already. Yes, I mean, Lagos sure. is a hassle well city. Mm -hmm. You came here to hassle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll say, you know, Lagos. You know, tell, I'll, I'll tell you the truth. This is a city to be in. You know, if you're living anywhere else in the world, you're missing out. This is where to be. You know, this is where to be. It's a land of opportunity. It's a land of possibility. You know, and we're blessed with good government in Lagos. You know, and um, I'll say the, the the guys are doing their bit to ensure that this place continues to be habitable and livable for people. Yeah, there's traffic, you know, that is typical with a large population. Okay. The, the city, I mean, look at city, over 20 million people, you know, crammed up in this small, and by the way, Lagos is the smallest state yeah. out of 36 states in Nigeria, it's you know, and but also the most populous, yeah. you know. So I'd say it's a, it's a city, it's a land of opportunity, mm. you know, with the population you expect, that yes there would be several you, you're opportunities you're saying that lagos is a land of opportunity but Absolutely. a lot of nigerians don't want to live in nigeria because they feel like greener pastures is out there why do you think you succeeded in lagos uh, you know the, the truth is the world right now is um it's a global village you really cannot stop migration is a global phenomenon okay. you know so people then have opportunities these days to live where they want to live yeah as you know, that being said, there are still more people, there are challenges in Nigeria, but there are still more Nigerians living in Nigeria than are living abroad. You know, several millions of Nigerians are living in Nigeria. You know, you can't stop you from, you know, going to look for greener pastures. You know, people always, people migrate, there are Americans living here. Exactly. There are French people living but, but here. But do you think it's possible mm -hmm. to make it in Lagos? Of course it is. A lot of people, you know, Dangote lives here, the richest man in Africa. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, so you know, you just lives here. He also lives here. <laughs> <laughs> don't even count me. You know, so you know, I I'll tell you, you know, whatever rocks your boat, whatever rocks your boat, you know, different um, opportunity for different people. Some will find their um, success in different locations. Some will find it in Lagos. I don't like to prescribe to people. Yeah. I like to say, just you know, just be whatever God is leading you. You know, and just um, you know, and, and just excel at whatever you do. Put in your best in whatever you do. You know, and you know. So for us here, we do real estate. Um, we found that there was a lot of mediocrity in the market in the sector. You know, um, people build buyers were even buying stuff they shouldn't buy because they didn't have alternative. You know, you go to a piece of house, plumbing issues, electrical issues. You know. A few friends that I knew I was into building would call me almost on a daily basis for one kind of problem or the other to solve, to help resolve in their homes. You know, so I began to think, you know, don't can't we have someone or a company that is going to build and once the key is given to you, mm. okay, there's not going to be issues. You know, can't we have companies that will do it? So we, we just set out to, you know, to really do things the right way, yeah. to do things with excellence, you know, because, you know, we wanted to live beyond the mediocrity you know, in, in, in the market, wanted to give value. Mm. So our value proposition was to, you know, develop homes that will not only be functional, but will really be habitable, will give people peace of mind, mm. you know. So well, that well, is really... What kind of houses are you building in Lagos? So we, we, we've dealt in, you know, initially we, we've doubled into different um, categories of building in the past. So we've done the mid, we did the medium end. We've never been in the low, lower end of the market, you know, because our style, cannot you know fit you know at this time of that so we start with the medium end 
Okay, then we then right now our focus really is in the um, I'll say the high end, you know, prime luxury development, you know, That's right, prime right. luxury development. So banana island, <laughs> you know, so we're doing banana. We've done quite a bit in banana, you know, other part of Ikoi. We've done in Victoria Island, you know, we've done in Lekki as well, you know. Uh, so we've served the upper middle class. We've served, you know, um, the whole idea is just to, um, to 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 do it well, oh. and you know. Because you're doing it well, doing it well is going to take capital. Exactly. You know, and where you want to do it well, you want to buy the right appliances, you want to buy, you know, the right sanitary wear. You just, all of these things are going to come back to reflect on the, you know, on the, on, on the, on the product and, of course, the sale price of the product. Okay. And when you do, you know, that kind of, so those kind of development are going to fit only in a particular location where you can get value for them. You know, so you know, but whatever it is, different people with different strength. They are very, they are guys doing very well in the lower end of the market, building mass housing. You know, so just knowing your strength. You know, we try to take the finishing to the to the highest level. Yeah. Okay, we try to take finish to the it, highest it, level. Is it expensive to live in one of your houses? I would say it's not. It's, so so it's relative. I would say we provide value beyond whatever money. You know, so what it can be. You know, what our clients know is that whatever they are paying. You know they've got a value much more than that amount. Yeah. You know, so I wouldn't look at it in um, in absolute terms, in terms of figures. Uh, so there are things that you know kind of um, you know make you, up those. You, you stuff. built hundred houses already. Over are you still houses. built over hundred houses? Are you still building? We're still building. We're, we're cost this business. I mean, you know, we're not we're not in it for we're not transactional. You know, we're we're we're, we're in this business for a long term. You know, we're building a business. We're building an an, a, a, an African business that we endure. We're going to be here for well over a hundred years, you know. So we're not building. When we're not retired? looking to, you know. So I, I mean, it's not the business is not about me. It's going to be beyond me. Wow. You know. Yeah. I happen to be privileged to be the founder, but our vision is not short term. Okay. So we're, we're it's a marathon. We're not, and that's why we're not. You know. People say, oh, you do all of this. You're not everywhere. We say yes. We're not in a hundred meter dash. It's a marathon. We're building the we're building the root of the business. Okay. So that when it grows, it becomes like an Iroko tree. It's very difficult to, yeah, to uproot. Yeah. You know, you know how you can, you know how you can, how you can plant a maize, yeah. and in one week you it can, grows, and you can, you know, yeah. quite. But you know, when you plant an Iroko yeah, tree, it, takes, yes. it goes down. It takes the roots downwards. Okay, they will begin to bear fruit upwards. You know, so so we're building a business. We, we, we don't want to run this. We don't want to start as a normal Nigerian African business mm. that just fits with time. You know, so our focus is not really all about money and all of that. Our focus is value. Be something that's going to endure, that's going to be transgenerational. Okay, even when I'm gone, it's still going to be here. Wow. You know, who so that's what we're doing. Are, who are the people that are purchasing these houses? So regular people, you know, regular people, upper middle class, people that have worked hard, people that have uh, excelled in their in their different endeavors. You know, we have people buy people patronize us from France. We've had buy from France. We've had buy all the way from Brunei. You know. We've had um, Nigerians, you know, working for oil companies in all of those com countries. We've had buyers, multiple buyers from the United States. We've had multiple buyers from the United Kingdom. Mm. You know, you know, people just want to feel that if people know they can trust you. You know, we do a lot of our buildings off plan, on okay. off plan basis, so people can make deposits. You know, then pay over okay. the period of construction. You know, so you know, initially when we started, people were checking. You know, there was a there's a gentleman, a medical doctor that came from, from England. Oh, he bought one of our apartments. Then he came a few months later, I said that we're building. He was really delightfully surprised mm. that, oh, you could actually give money in this country and somebody will really build. He came and bought, and bought the second one. You know, so once people know that, yes, you're so disciplined, you know, you're, you're delivering on promise. They will really so for us it's been it's been it's been a very good story. You know, there's nobody, there's nobody that will tell you. You know, globally, that we're owing them any house that we haven't delivered. Mm. I'm saying it publicly, nobody. We've delivered on every house. There's no single house we're owing anybody that we haven't delivered on promise. Okay, so uh, when my eyes, these are the kind of houses I was talking, I was telling you about. These are luxury homes, you can see them. You know, these are all luxury houses. You know, these are on four floors. Because the land is so expensive, we have to take the building up. Okay, so you have all of these are very functional homes. Mm. All of the luxury is in here. Okay, so these are these people are experiencing the taste of luxury 
you know, oh. and they're so happy. They're so happy. They're so How happy. Many bedrooms is These this? are five bedroom houses, comes with elevator, you know, these are lovely homes, you know. So just, just wanted you to see an example of what we do, you know. So, you know. Yeah, you got a rooftop, yeah? Yeah, good rooftop, rooftop seat out. Now, most of our houses have got rooftop seat out. You can, you know, see the lagoon. Also, also lagoon, you know, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's you can see the boat, house, you know, man. you know, so, That's you know, impressive. just a piece of luxury, wow. you know. Can you tell me um, the kind of challenges that you faced when you started your real estate business here in Nigeria? Okay, so mm, I would say most of the the biggest challenge really initially was that of funding. You know, um, so we are in an environment where the interest rate is very high, double digit, upward of 20 percent. Uh, you know, so. The business itself is capital intensive, hugely capital intensive. Okay, you do not have the banking support as it were when you're starting out. Of course, things are better right now because you then you built track record, financial institutions are willing to deal with us and all of that. But initially, that was really a major challenge. Then of course the challenge of trust initially, you know, when people haven't you know bought from you, they haven't tested you, you know, but all of that gradually faded away as we began to you know to prove ourselves you know, within the uh, real estate space, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but I'll say that uh, by and large, still up to date in this, in the sector, as a sector in itself, real estate sector, and in terms of development, funding is still a major challenge. So most of our projects are done on off-plan basis, you know, where we then have, we invite investors at the beginning of the project to co-invest, okay? So we're saying, Come and buy, we're gonna give you some discount, some value for your time value of money. Okay, you then pay spread payment across the life cycle of the project. So it's gonna take 24 months to build. We invite investors right from early on at the foundation level, agree on a payment plan with them, okay, and then that that has really helped to um, to bridge the gap, the funding gap. You know. Who who are the people who are building this beautiful estate? Yes, we use, I would say, almost 100% Africans. You know, uh, we have, of course, majority Nigerians. We have Ghanaians. We have people from Benin Republic. We have people from Ivory Coast. You know, we have a lot of Ghanaians on our side. You know, engineers. We have a lot of Nigerian engineers. Very hardworking, very smart people. All of these buildings I'm going to show you are, I would say, 99.9% .9 Nigerians. You know, and uh, I mean, 99.9% 99 .9 Africans, I would say. Like Nigerians, Benin Republic, Ivory Coast, and Ghanaians, you know, form the crux of our workforce. And I'll tell you the truth, you know, given the opportunity, these guys have been performing tremendously well. You know, so we have what it takes in Africa. We don't need to look out as well. We have a few expatriates from Europe. You know, like the chief engineer is, um, is an European. You know, but I'll tell you, 99% of the work is done by African brothers. You know. I just want to know, yeah, currently how many people are working for you? Okay, so, uh, you know, for a single house, we could have over two to 300 people, okay. you know, actually, you know, employed from the foundation to the end of that building. Wow. You know, so all of these buildings I would do employ thousands of people, you know, as a matter of fact, both skilled and unskilled, you know, direct labor and all of that, you know, so we have, Construction is a high employer of labor. Employer of labor. employment. Yes, you know. Just but kitchen, I, you know. I, I just want to know, mm -hmm. yeah? Yes. We've got a lot of young Africans who want to be an entrepreneur, who want to start building. Absolutely. As someone who has already succeeded, I mean, he's a billionaire, he doesn't want to start. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I do want to know, I told what, you is, what is the message for young Africans that are trying to um, establish something on their own? Honestly, I'll tell you that, you know, believe in yourself. You. Put in the work. Mm. You need to put in the work. You mm. know, put in the hard work. Um, believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. Strike the right relationship. Okay. Try to identify opportunities. Okay. Oh, yeah. Try to identify opportunities. Strike the right relationship. Hard work. Okay. Mm. And whatever you you believe, whatever you do, just believe in yourself. Believe you can do it. Don't be too scared. Don't be scared to make. I tell people, you, you can in your twenties make the mistakes, okay? Make mistakes in your early thirties. Make the mistakes. You have the time. You have the unfair advantage of the time, you know, to be able to recover. 
Okay, because you're young, people are going to excuse your mistakes. Mm. Okay, they don't look at that. The, the, the pressure on you is not going to be that much at that time. Mm. So make your mistakes early. Wow. Okay, go for it. Just go for it. Go for what you believe. You know, yeah. God's grace is the first thing, and God's grace is there. But the truth is, God will not. God expects you to put in the work. Exactly. He's not going to manna. Is not, manna doesn't fall from heaven anymore. <laughs> you know, put in the work. Put in the work. I'll tell you, put in the work, and you know. Put in the work and so these are the things that some of the this one of the some of the houses we do. You can see we try to pay attention to every detail. We try to um, we try to just make excellence our watchword. We try to make excellence our watchword. Yeah, so this is a townhouse. I'll just show you how it is. It's a townhouse on ground floor, ground floor plus plus three. Yeah. Okay, so these are townhouses. One person owns this one. Ground floor, first floor, second floor, and the third floor. Okay, so you can see that the, wow. the parking is demarcated for each person. Two car park for each of the houses. Wow. Okay, the common there's a common swimming pool. Okay, you know. So. Yeah. So I, I just want to know, yeah, we're living in Africa right now. Absolutely. Do you believe that Africa is the future? Africa is the future. Africa is indeed the future, and not just the future. Africa is already said the future is already here. You know, we have people making giant strides. You know, we have people doing great things in Africa. Africa is underreported. You know, only the bad stories keep, seems to be coming out of Africa. Mm. But we do have people, excellent people, Nigerians, Ghanaians, Senegalese, South Africans, doing great exploit. Wow. You know, doing great exploit. If you had a chance to change one thing in Africa, what would it change? If I had a chance to change one thing in Africa, it would be the mindset. Of the people, everything starts from the mind. Yeah. You know, believe in yourself. Yes, everything starts from the mind. But well, why would you do that? You see, what you don't believe, you can. What you do not uh, believe, what you do not see, you cannot become. Okay. So there's a part of vision. A lot of the Africans um, need to understand. Need to stop blaming their parents mm. for their woes. Okay, they need to stop blaming themselves. They need to start, stop blaming their environment. Mm. They need to work within what they have and excel. You did it. I and did. they can do it as well. I just want to say thank you so much, but I don't know if this house are sold out or you still selling. This house is actually sold out. This one is sold out. We started selling from the foundation level. You know, we, had, we gave people the opportunity to pay as the building was being developed. But we do have other development ongoing, lovely development, mm. you know, that I'm going. I'll come and buy one of those. Thank you so much for talking to me. I appreciate your time. Yeah, the guy. <laughs> and I like what you're doing. You're doing great. Thank you. Showing Africa to the world. Showing the real Africa to the world. Thank you. Thank you. Keep it up. And thank you so much. And thanks for giving me the opportunity to talk thanks. to you. Thanks. I appreciate you know, it. I, I hope I also become a billionaire in future. <laughs> you are one already. <laughs>